begin taking responsibility and gain confidence of the Afghan people. Our strategy includes a military effort that takes the fight to the Taliban while creating the conditions for greater security and a transition to the Afghans, but also a civilian effort that improves the daily lives of the Afghan people and combats corruption and a partnership with Pakistan and its people because we can't uproot extremists and advance security and opportunity unless we succeed on both sides of the border. Most of you understand that. Many of the troops that I ordered to Afghanistan have begun to arrive, and more are on the way. And we'll continue to work with Congress to make sure that you've got the equipment that you need, particularly as we complete our drawdown in Iraq. We're providing more helicopters, we're providing more intelligence and reconnaissance capabilities, more special operations forces, more armored vehicles that can save lives. And here in Afghanistan, you've gone on the offensive, and the American people back home are noticing. We have seen a huge increase in support in stateside because people understand the kinds of sacrifices that you guys are making and the clarity of mission that you're bringing to bear. And together with our coalition and Afghan partners, our troops have pushed the Taliban out of their stronghold in Marjda. We've changed the way we operate and interact with the Afghan people. We see Afghans reclaiming their communities, and we see new partnerships that will help them build their own future and increase their security. And across the border, Pakistan's mounting major offenses. We've seen violent extremists pushed out of their sanctuaries. We've struck major blows against al-Qaeda leadership as well as the Taliban's. They are hunkered down. They're worried about their own safety. It's harder for them to move. It's harder for them to train and to plot and to attack. And all of that makes America safer. And we are going to keep them on the run because that is what's going to be required in order to assure that our families back home have the security that they need. That's the work that you're doing. So thanks to you, there's been progress these last several months. But we know there are going to be some difficult days ahead. There's going to be setbacks. We face a determined enemy. But we also know this. The United States of America does not quit once it starts on something. You don't quit. The American Armed Services does not quit. We keep at it. We persevere. And together with our partners, we will prevail. I am absolutely confident of that. And I also want you to know that as you're doing your duty here, we're going to do right by you back home. We're going to help take care of your families. And that's why the First Lady, Michelle Obama, visited with military families and make sure that their needs are met. That's why she stays after me once she gets home, when I'm at the White House. And we're going to make sure that we are keeping to improve your pay and your benefits, but also things like child care, child care and support that ensure that you've got a little bit of security knowing your family is being looked after back home. And we'll be there for you when you come home. That's why we're improving care for our wounded warriors, especially those with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. We're moving forward with the post 9-11 GI Bill so you and your families can pursue your dreams. And we've made the biggest increase in the VA budget in 30 years because we're going to keep our sacred trust with all those who serve. You've been there for us, tour after tour, year after year, at a time when too many American institutions have let us down when too many institutions have put short-term short -term gain in front of a commitment to duty and a commitment to what's right, you've met your responsibilities. You've done your duty. Not just when it's easy, but when it's hard. And that's why you've inspired your fellow Americans. And that's why you inspire me. That's why you've earned your place next to the very greatest of American generations. And all of you represent the virtues and the values that America 
so desperately needs right now. Sacrifice and selflessness, honor and decency. That's what I see here today. That's what you represent. I've seen your sense of purpose and your willingness to step forward and serve in a time of danger. I've seen it from the Marines I met at Camp Lejeune, to the cadets at West Point, from the midshipmen at Annapolis, to the troops I have met in Iraq and at bases across America and here in Afghanistan. I've seen your courage and your heroism in the story of a young sergeant, first class, named Jared Monte, who gave his life here in Afghanistan to save his fellow soldiers and whose parents I was proud to present with our nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor. I've seen your tenacity. I've seen your tenacity and determination in our wounded warriors in Lansdale and Walter Reed, Americans fighting to stand again and to walk again and to get back with you, get back with their units. Incredible dedication, incredible focus, incredible pride. And I've been humbled by your sacrifice in the solemn homecoming of flag draped coffins at Dover, to the headstones in Section 60 at Arlington, where the fallen from this war rest in peace alongside the fellow heroes of America's story. So here in Afghanistan, each one of you is part of an unbroken line of American service members who've sacrificed for over two centuries. You're protecting your fellow citizens from danger. You're serving alongside old allies and new friends. You're bringing hope and opportunity to a people who've known a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. And I know that sometimes when you're watching TV, the politics back home may look a little messy and people are yelling and hollering and Democrats this and Republicans that. I want you to understand this. There's no daylight when it comes to support of all of you. There's no daylight when it comes to supporting our troops. That brings us together. We are all incredibly proud. We all honor what you do. And all of you show, to get, show all of America what's possible when people come together, not based on color or creed, not based on faith or station, but based on a commitment to serve together, to bleed together and to succeed together as one people, as Americans. Make no mistake, this fight matters to us. It matters to us, it matters to our allies, it matters to the Afghan people. Al-Qaeda and the violent extremists who you're fighting against want to destroy, but all of you want to build. And that is something essential about America. They've got no respect for human life. You see dignity in every human being. That's part of what we value as Americans. They want to drive races and regions and religions apart. You want to bring people together and see the world move forward together. They offer fear, in other words, and you offer hope. And that's why it is so important that you know that the entire country stands behind you. That's why you put on that uniform. Because in an uncertain world, the United States of America will always stand up for the security of nations and the dignity of human beings. That's who we are. That is what we do. Much has happened to our country and to the world since 9/11. But I'm confident that so long as brave, but I'm confident that so long as brave men and women like you, Americans who are willing to serve selflessly, half a world away, on behalf of their fellow citizens and the dreams of people they've never met, so long as there are folks like you, then I'm confident that our nation will endure, and hope will overcome fear. And I am confident that better days lie ahead. So thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. God bless the United States Armed Forces. And God bless 
the United States of America.